Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time. If you are new, we are back to watch the season finale of Ahsoka. I have been thoroughly enjoying this show so much uh, up to this point. Like, everything about it is just fantastic, in my opinion, and I'm so stoked for the finale. I'm predicting we don't win. <laughs> I'm predicting that Thrawn gets away, the gang loses somehow, and it'll lead into season two beyond. I don't know. Hopefully we get to see Ezra uh, reunited with like Hera. Hopefully we figure out what the frick is going on with Balin's skull. Uh, I'm curious what's gonna happen to Shin. Uh, and then I'm, I'm excited to see Thrawn return uh, to his, his rightful place. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm also, oh, I'm also curious to see if maybe we get some hints to, like, the greater, uh, Grisk threat that's out there, uh, with involving Thrawn, and, and if it's gonna tie into that at all, or if it's purely just gonna be, like, contained to, like, he's, only here for the empire there's no greater threat you know because i really i really want that aspect of those books to play in but who knows either way uh i'm really excited to jump into this so before we do that if you end up enjoying this reaction please leave a like on the video it means a lot to me it helps my channel grow if you're new here hit subscribe ring the bell so you're notified when i upload and then if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction, consider supporting me on Patreon. That is linked in the description down below. You just sync up your own copy of the show and you can watch along with me. Uh, or join me on YouTube memberships. That would mean the world as well. But other than that, jump into the season finale of Ahsoka. God, his ship is so cool. Like, it's just, it's so rad. There is little the Jedi can do to stop us now. I've watched many an Imperial officer make the same assumptions about the Rebellion. Mm-hmm. Mega facts. Even I fell victim to the heroics of a single Jedi. Ezra Bridger. Never again. We are grateful to you, Grand Admiral. What are you guys getting out of this? You, Morgan Elspeth. She who heard our dreams across the stars. Come forward. Are they going to make you an official night sister? Are you prepared? No. Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not prepared. You pledge yourself. Your gifts are to the sisterhood. Probably spooky. To the magics. To the old ways. Goodness. That's horrifying. What are they doing? Are they making her a sword? Oh my god. The blade. Oh, Talson. Blade of Talzin? How dare you show that to me? Sister. That thing's rad as hell. That's so freaking cool. It looks like a giant sonic screwdriver. Doctor Who. <laughs> Looks like the uh, 11th Doctor's sonic screwdriver. <sighs> okay, here we go. Game time, baby. The Jedi, the Witch, and the Warlord. Nice. C.S. Lewis reference. You know, for people that don't have a whole lot of time, I don't know why we're still hanging out with this hermit crab species. 
Yes. Ezra. Did I call it? That he's building himself a new lightsaber? Or did I call it? The blade emitter is too narrow. Now look here. I have been teaching younglings how to construct lightsabers long That's a very meta alive. Rebels reference. That the blade is too narrow. Who told you how to build a lightsaber anyway? Kanan Jarrus. <gasps> Is that so? We got a mention of Kanan! He was my master. And hers kind of a little bit for a minute, but not really. And I taught him how to build a lightsaber. What? Yeah, taught everybody. I taught almost every youngling at the Jedi Temple, including your master. The other boy Caleb was very curious. A little shy, perhaps. Caleb Doom. How old are you? Old enough to Heck know that the relationship between a master and an apprentice is as challenging as it is meaningful. True facts about the octopus. That's it. I had two of those. Kanan took the one, the other I held on to in case he ever needed it. Is he gonna model his lightsaber after Kanan's? Bruh. That's incredible. Well done. Looks like you were a good student. Oh. Don't make me cry. What happened between those two? You missed a lot, dude. That Sabine was training as a Jedi for the wrong reasons after what happened on Mandalore. Which was? Her whole family died. At the time, Ahsoka felt that if Sabine unlocked her potential, she would become dangerous. Yeah. That tracks. Sabine has always been a little bit of a temperamental soul. You're not mad? Over the years, I've made my share of difficult choices. True. Often no one understood my reasons. Except my master. Yeah. Darth Vader. He always stood by me. For the most part. Even when no one else did. Like when you left the Jedi Order, and he was the only one that thought you were innocent. No what happens next. I'm going to be there for you. You guys should hug. Trust in the Force. Always. Let's go. Just finished. Oop. Back in the ship. We ain't got any shields on. Just get out of there. Go, go. On my signal. Now. Oh, damn. Opa, opa! Oh, and then we crash. Sick. <laughs> Just immediately drop out of the sky. Well, okay. So that's gonna have to stay here from now on. Consider all of the TIE fighters lost. Mark their captain for a citation. <laughs> citation. Okay, Hu Yang's staying to fix the ship. May the force be with you. I was like, are we just gonna leave this thing here permanently? <laughs> Alright, Ezra. Any ideas of what we're up against? But Thrawn found this place. He woke up the witches, rebuilt his starship. They were as oh, the witches were asleep. Let's try the front door. 
Rain hellfire upon them. There'd be no negotiating with the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> that they're not really the negotiating lineage. <laughs> That is scary. Help out. I don't know if Sabine is adding much help in that scenario. Just barely. <laughs> He's annoyed. All three of them. Sabine, blasters. Yeah, that seems much more efficient for her to use her blasters. Let's go, Ezra. Goaded. They're reviving their dead bodies. Come on now. We ain't trying to fight zombies no more. Ezra. Yeah, they're very familiar with this. This never happened before. No. This is new. Uh, well, no, not quite. You guys dealt with this in Rebels. Well, time for some dismemberment. Cut off their legs. <laughs> Careful! Blast doors. She's been training. A little bit. Ah. Uh, yeah, he hasn't had much practice lately. The Jedi are advancing swiftly. At this rate, they may get on board the ship, which would be problematic. <sighs> True. You will stay to delay them. We require a little more time. I understand. You're being left behind. She is really sacrificing a lot for this. Those guys look so cool as well. Death troopers with the red ribbons on. You must stop Thrawn. Now go. Ahsoka will make it on board. Unless she gets left behind too. They have dueled before. She's so good. <laughs> he looks at him like, ah. 
Take us out. Ezra is always getting tossed around. Can she do it? <clears throat> oh, 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 let's go, Sabine! Oh, come on. You couldn't have showed that. <laughs> yeah, Soka, you're going to want to bail. You can't make that jump. Yes, you can. I appreciate the confidence. No, I pushed you first and you pulled me across. I can do this. What if he doesn't make the jump? <laughs> Trust in the force to save you from the landing. Could have used your jetpack right now, Sabine. Go. Ba -ba -ba! Ba -ba 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 he made it. He made it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's fine. Yes. Let's go. Oh, she's going for Ahsoka. Oh no! She cut one of her lightsabers in half. Anakin made that lightsaber for her! Damn. Ahsoka, you kind of getting bodied right now. You will die here. Alone. She's not alone. Not alone. <laughs> oh, Sabine. <laughs> yes. I feel like this is perfect style for her. Just like Cal Kestis, one gun and a saber. Good night, sister. Morgan is dead. She has done what was required. Still a little bit sad for you. LS 757 reinforcements have been dispatched to your position. Oh. Time to go undercover, baby. 757 here. Copy. Take his clothes. Get the heck out of Dodge. Jump! That shit better be under there. Ugh. Question is... Will they reach the Chimera before it jumps into hyperspace? Ahsoka Tano, allow me to commend you on your efforts today. You've been quite a worthy opponent. I know you. Because I knew your master. You guys hung out. One wonders just how similar you might become. Ooh. Perhaps. Don't taunt her. 
today, victory is mine. Yeah, they're not gonna make it. Long live the Empire. No. Can you jump through the same hole? I guess you guys gotta live here now and trust that Ezra will come back for you. Yo, what, where are um, <laughs> Balin and Shin? What are they doing? Ooh, the Morai bird. Shin! She's just gonna be like a, oh my God, is that the, the father? And the son, oh my goodness. Oh, and the broken one is the daughter. Holy cow. What is he going to Mount Doom? Something's flashing in the distance there. They're presumably going to have to recast his role then if they're planning on continuing it. Holy cow. We're definitely getting a season two. <laughs> oh, this is Balin's ship. Is this Ezra? It's like 40 people. Guns drawn. <sighs> Ezra? That's your boy! Hi, Hera. Your adopted child! Well. Oh, how do you not have them hug? What is it? I felt like... Nothing. What did you feel like? What are we looking at? <laughs> what are we seeing? The music. <laughs> Force ghost Anakin. Oh. Wow. What an episode. Excellent, excellent. Okay, what an interesting end. Uh, very much like a, not necessarily a cliffhanger, but like, it's clearly meant to convey that the story of this season is not wrapped up at all. And it's gonna continue going forward. So I went into this episode kind of expecting that we weren't gonna win, uh, just because it's it's been pretty widely reported from the get-go that Thrawn was gonna be like, the main villain of this whole, like, not saga, but this little, like, section of in between the original trilogy and the sequels, and that he was going to be, like, the big bad, and then it was all going to, like, uh, Ahsoka, uh, uh, freaking uh, Mandalorian, all this stuff, like, was going to culminate with a movie directed by Dave Filoni where Thrawn is, like, the the villain of that movie. And so I kind of went into this expecting Thrawn's going to make it back and 
all hell will break loose, right? Like we're not gonna succeed in stopping him. That was kind of my thought process going in. Uh, but the exact process of how that went down throughout the episode was so interesting and so cool. Like I feel like there's 20 different things I could touch on, but um, we're left with some, some big moments at the end uh, regarding, you know, like Ahsoka and Sabine stuck on this planet. Uh, Ezra back with it uh, with Hera uh, Balin on like a vision quest somewhere Shin joining like a group of bandits <laughs> and Thrawn uh, back uh, at Dathomir like just the end state of where we left or, or where we have left all the characters is just so interesting and just sets up very interesting like jump pads to where all these different stories can go but it's very much meant to convey that like either season two is coming or or they're going to continue this in uh, the Mandalorian or they're going to continue it elsewhere. But like pretty much none of the story beats that we've set up got concluded at all. There were a lot of dope moments in this episode, though. So uh, what, the first cool moment, I guess, that happened <laughs> it was also kind of freaky. Um, uh, we had, uh, we had, uh, Morgan Elsbeth officially, like, inducted into the Night Sisters, right? Like, they made her, like, an official Night Sister, and then we see that, like, the, the eye black makeup and all, like, the facial makeup that they have is not actually makeup, and they literally burn that into their faces. <laughs> Like, that's horrific. Like, they just grab her face and are like, let's just sear this into your skull. <laughs> and then they give her a dope sword, the Blade of Talzin. Uh, and it's like it's this flaming green sword, and it's super cool. Um, and, and she's like officially a Night Sister now, which is really rad. The next cool moment that I really, really enjoyed is Ezra rebuilding his lights, or not rebuilding, but building a new lightsaber for himself. And I am a genius. I called this in my post episode uh, discussion last time. I was like, Ezra's gonna rebuild his lightsaber and he's gonna model it after Kanan's and that's exactly what he does. Oh my God, it's brilliant. Uh, we um, first of all we get a Kanan uh, name drop, and then we get the his his OG name Caleb Doom uh, name drop as well. And Ezra, the final piece he needs is the is the emitter or or, or the the like the the end piece. Um, and only two of them were were made. Hu Yang had two of them. One went to Caleb. The other goes to his apprentice Ezra. And it's just, oh, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant. It's a blue lightsaber. So he's he's following in, in Kanan's footsteps. And it's brilliant. It's so, so good. Uh, I love it. And we get we get the the little piece of info from Hu Yang where he's like, you know, uh, the master and apprentice relationship can be very difficult, but it all it is also equally as meaningful. Uh, and that's... Part, that's one little story aspect that's been building over the course of the season is um, Ahsoka and Sabine's uh, connection, right? They're them truly, like truly forging a, a master and apprentice relationship, right? Because I feel like oftentimes when we see Jedi and their Padawan, they're all locked in, like st side by side, step by step. We don't often see the growing pains of like, how did they get to the point where they like pretty much completely trust each other? We somewhat saw those growing pains with Ezra and Kanan, um, but oftentimes the Jedi's, when we see them with their Padawan, they're already like side by side, lockstep with each other. Um, and so seeing that relationship develop over, over the course of the season and seeing them truly come to trust each other has been great. Uh, and we get some more info on why uh, partly why Ahsoka walked away earlier. It wasn't just her own stuff, right? I mean, she had her own reasons, but also she didn't think Sabine was in it for the right reasons. She thought Sabine was wanting to gain that power and wanting to become a Jedi to essentially take revenge for her family and avenge them. And if she had been able to be brought to her full potential at that point, she would have been dangerous. Um, and so that 
is a, a solid a solid reason in its own for Ahsoka to be cautious. But uh, Sabine unlocking her potential is definitely something we saw in this episode for sure. First, she uses her expert piloting skills to just take out those two TIE fighters, which was pretty dope. <laughs> that she just like walks away. She's like, I got them. It's like, you did, you did, Sabine, nice job. But then uh, the, the trio, their assault on the compound was pretty cool to see. Just having them, all three of them, working together so well, taking out all, all these night troopers, and then <laughs> having the night troopers raised from the dead uh, to fight again, insane. Um, they had a line where like, have you dealt with this before? And he's like, nope, this is new. It, it's not new though. <laughs> They very much fought undead knight people uh, in Rebels. I mean, granted, they didn't fight trooper undead troopers, but like, they fought un the they fought the undead in Rebels. Like, that's something that that they did. Well, actually, Ezra Ezra was there. Yeah, he was there, and Sabine got possessed for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, uh, but that definitely happened. Uh, that was a real thing. But it was interesting just seeing, seeing Thrawn like moment by moment, just like <laughs> get buying a little time here, a little time there, um, and and getting away, like showing that those those each of those little moments was necessary, uh, and he thought of them all ahead of time. It wasn't like reactionary stuff necessarily. It was him being like, okay, now do this, now do this, now do this, and like the pieces falling into into place where um, every time they were closing or getting close, they just had one little extra thing to delay him just enough. Um, and, and it was what he needed in the end. Morgan Elsbeth having to stay behind uh, rip to her. <laughs> That's a total bummer. She probably went into this mission, you know, she's receiving these, these visions and these thoughts from the Dathomirian sisters that... Uh, uh, Thrawn woke up. That's an interesting tidbit. Thrawn found them and woke them up. So like they were just like sleeping or, or in stasis, like not like wake up like oh regular sleep, but they were like deep sleep. Um, and he woke them up. Maybe that's why they feel they owe him so much is because if not for him, they just would have been like permanently asleep. I don't know, but yeah, uh, he woke them up. And then they're sending visions to Morgan Elsbeth, and she's probably thinking like, she's part of this grand plan. She put so much work into getting Thrawn back. Like 99% of what happened on <laughs> on this side of, of the universe to get Thrawn back, she was a part of. She put so much time and effort and money into this, and she gets there, and then right when they're like gonna succeed, he's like, you have to stay behind. <laughs> that that would be devastating. I would be like, what? I'd be like, F that. Like, I'm not staying behind. Why don't you just take all your troopers? Have Captain Enoch stay behind. <laughs> Have Amos from the Expanse uh, delay her. Like, I'm not staying behind. Uh, but no, she does. And she fights Ahsoka. And it's a cool fight. It was a really good fight. Like, uh, harkens back to, um, what, season, season two of The Mandalorian? When uh, her and Ahsoka fought when they she had the Beskar spear that uh, she gave to um, Din Djarin after. Um, cool fight. Like, I mean, it was an even cooler fight this time than last time. Um, but her using her using the, the green blade and just holding her own against Ahsoka, like doing a good job, and even cutting one of Ahsoka's lightsabers in half. Like, that's insane. Ahsoka's either going to have to repair that or just be a one lightsaber gal from now on or build a new one but it's like Anakin helped build those for her kind of he repaired them and, and made them blue <laughs> but then she turned them white um so there's a connection to Anakin there and and it's a bummer uh but it was it was pretty dope seeing uh like they're so they're all fighting right uh Ahsoka's fighting Morgan Elizabeth um Sabine and Ezra are fighting um, these two, like, death troopers, like, death troopers with the red ribbons, they look so cool, and we see Sabine truly, like, finally get over that, like, mental hurdle, um, where she's been struggling and struggling and struggling to use the force this whole time, and now when her life is on the line, she's able to summon her saber, blade through this dude's skull, like, excellent work, um, and then... 
Ezra decapitates a guy, but it he they don't want to show that on because it's Disney Plus. They're like, oh, we can't show that. So like he slices through, and then it like pans behind a rock, and then you see the head, and it's like, come on, just show it to us. Like it's the same reason they won't let them do like full dismemberment in the Star Wars games anymore. It's like just show it. <laughs> like we know what's happening. Just give us realistic lightsabers. <laughs> and then her having to help Ezra. Like, she force pushes him um, so he can make the jump. Excellent, excellent. I think Sabine is, like, fully... She's, like, fully a Jedi now, which is pretty rad. Like, she's in touch with the Force. Um, she's in the zone. She's unlocked her potential, and it's excellent. Um, and Ezra gets on board, and the the right when you think Ahsoka is going to be beaten uh, alone... Sabine's like not alone and then they fight they fight and they they rescue and save each other and they almost they almost catch Thrawn's ship uh but not enough they didn't have enough and Thrawn's parting message he's like I know you I know you because I know Anakin um and I win today and then he leaves it with long live the empire <laughs> and it's like oh man I I I wish I, I wish there was a small hint to the Grisk in this, but, you know, makes sense. It makes sense, I guess, that, like, right now he's fully focused on the Empire. It, whether he's been just, like, over time, slowly disillusioned to where he doesn't care about the Grisk threat anymore and is more, like, in it for himself and power-hungry, or if he truly believes, like, he needs to rebuild the Empire to its strength to then use it to help the ascendancy. I don't know. I don't know if we're ever gonna get a, a return to that plot point. Um, I don't know if Dave Filoni really cares <laughs> about the ascendancy trilogy at all. Who knows? But then, yeah, we reach the end of the episode, the end of the season, technically, and we're left with some very interesting uh, scenarios where, uh, one, Sabine and Ahsoka, they are, you know, on this planet still and they're hanging out with these hermit crabs <laughs> and uh, they probably just you know reappropriated Ezra's pod there <laughs> the pod that Ezra had they're like all right this is just ours now um master and apprentice gonna stay in here uh and we see the Morai bird so Ahsoka knows you know the force is still with her here she's on the right path and then she sees the uh force ghost of it of Anakin I think she saw him I think Sabine sensed it maybe or like glimpsed it briefly but uh Anakin just kind of like looking approvingly on his on his padawan is just a brilliant way to end the season really enjoyed that um we have uh Ezra reuniting with with Hera fantastic her her little adopted boy uh back home um and she pretty much is like an adopted son to her right like she's got her actual son and Jason but like her and her and Kanan essentially adopted this child. <laughs> like Ezra, Ezra is part of their family, and she very much feels like a mother to him. So like having him back is probably insane. Given you know she thought to a small extent that he was dead and that she might never see him again. So having him back, I would cry. <laughs> if I were her, I would cry. Um, and, and he's back, and he's modeled his lights ever after Kanan, and it's, oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's so good. Um, very excited to see where that goes, and, and having probably, I wonder if Ezra then will appear like season four of The Mandalorian, or in some other things, right? Like, he's going to be a key leader in the fight against Thrawn on this side of the galaxy, right? Because Hera and, or uh, uh, Ahsoka and Sabine are still stuck on this other galaxy. So he's going to be like the key focal point for the resistance against Thrawn. Um, very curious. He do he does have a new helmet for his collection though, uh, which is pretty sick. Um, Shin, Shin Hati, she strolls up to the bandit camp and then is just like lightsaber. And they're like, okay, cool. Like, is she requesting to join them or is she like strolling up being like, your leader has arrived? Like, is she, is she going to be in charge of them, or is she just going to assimilate as part of the gang and just, like, hang out? Um, it's cool that her and uh, Sabine and uh, Ahsoka are on the same planet, uh, and they can maybe meet up. She could maybe even meet up with Balin, because he's still there as well. 
Um, and his his situation is particularly interesting. So he he strolls up and he's like looking at this mountain in the distance, I think. And it's like this, you know, uh, shining beacon or something in the distance. I don't know exactly what he was looking at. Um, but he is standing on a statue like of, of the Mortis trilogy. <laughs> the the Mortis gods uh, have their have a, a three tiered statue there. He's standing on the father to the on on the screen's right, his left was the son, and then on the opposite side was a broken version of the of the daughter. Um, and so it's, that's so cool to see that. Like bringing it, bringing it back to the Mortis uh, family is fantastic, and it just really makes me wonder what the frick is going on, what is calling to him, and and what are they going to do with that storyline? Because obviously, uh, this is the last time we will see Ray Stevenson on camera, which is a, a bummer, a huge bummer. Um, the actor that portrays him, Ray Stevenson. Uh, passed away, so we're no longer going to see Balin Skull. I mean, we might see Balin Skull from a different actor, um, but we will not see Ray Stevenson. Um, and so I'm curious if they plan on picking that storyline up for season two. I mean, obviously they wrote it in a way where they were like, assumed that he was going to be around for season two. Um, I hope they continue that storyline. I think that would be very interesting to see. Um, if they do, they will need to recast. I don't know if they would be willing to go... I, I, I feel like it would be weird if they went the deep fake route, um, given that it's an actor who's passed on. I would say recast the role. Um, there's plenty of different actors that could fit the bill. I don't necessarily know off the top of my head who, who would be a solid choice. Maybe Gerard Butler, um, the guy who played um, uh, Davos uh, Seaworth in Game of Thrones, he could be an option. Um, a couple other guys could be, uh, Liev Schreiber could be a good one. Um, there's a couple guys who could probably take on that role, um, but I'm just, I'm very curious to see what route they'll go in terms of just picking that storyline up, because I feel like that one was a storyline that had the most potential of like they could do some very interesting stuff with Balin uh, going forward and him having passed away def I mean purely logistically from a like storytelling content perspective it feels awful to like talk about it in a way of like how how will I you know how does this relate to my content but you know it is it is a side of it um you know curious just to see how they go about because it, it could be some really cool storylines uh going forward about that um but to a greater and much more important degree um we no longer have ray stevenson and that's a total bummer um he it was so good in this role <laughs> he was so good like some of the most interesting parts of this season was uh, Balin Skull and Shin Hati and their relationship and the portrayal of the actors. Like, they were so good. Like, both of them were incredible. And he had such a, this level of gravitas to the character, this this uh, stoicism, um, that, like, it'll be very hard to replace him. And it's such a... I hope he got to see a little bit of the episodes before he passed on, you know. And, you know, might, they might not have been fully... VFX or edited completely, but I hope he got to see a little bit of like previs or some I don't know. That's becoming more of a rare thing for the actors to see uh, until like they often don't see it until it's the finished product. So it's such a bummer that he never got to see the final product of his performance and then just the heaps of praise for his character and his portrayal. Like. It's uh, it's such a bummer. Hopefully his family is aware. <laughs> like that's just that's so unfortunate because he was so good. Um, he's been good in everything as well. Like he was great in RRR. He was great in Black Sails. Like he's just so good. Ray Stevenson is fantastic, um, and he will be missed for sure. 
Um, as far as all the other portrayals, you know, Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, excellent as always. Um, Natasha Liu Borduzzo uh, as Sabine, I thought she was great. You know, she she added that layer of, of Sabine being a, you know, a 30-year-old lady now, like fully grown but still has a lot of trauma from her past. Um, I thought she was great. Lars Mikkelsen is Thrawn impeccable casting i mean there's no one else you could have picked for that for the live action portrayal he's he's perfect um that was fantastic uh amos burton <laughs> uh, captain enoch uh played by west chatham uh the best casting of the entire show <laughs> just because just because i love amos and his character looked cool uh he didn't do really much of anything at all he just looked awesome um <laughs> <laughs> but he's the best casting. Um, and then, uh, phew, frick, what is his name? Iman Esfandi. Iman Esfandi. Uh, he was perfect as Ezra. Like, as good uh, a casting as, as Thrawn. Like, he embodied Ezra. He was so good. Like, the little mannerisms, the quirky little, like, lighthearted uh, idiot idiocy. Like... You know, Ezra's, Ezra's dope, but at the same time, Ezra's a dumb little kid sometimes. <laughs> he makes dumb decisions and, and is goofy and obnoxious sometimes, and he portrayed him perfectly. He, he was so good as Ezra. Fantastic. Um, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Hera. Uh, I wish she would have gotten more to do. She'll probably get more in, in the upcoming seasons, uh, and maybe The Mandalorian. Um, she was solid i thought she was good um chopper fantastic a little war criminal on screen we got it we got to see him do some more war crimes um <laughs> um morgan elsbeth she was morgan elsbeth she was good um i don't know the so far it was just so cool like i really really enjoyed this season and the production value on everything was so high and it, it felt like it took itself seriously and like there weren't any in my opinion there weren't any like substantial dips in quality at any point throughout the season like it all felt like it had a, a level of weightiness and gravitas to the story like it's important like and it treated itself as important um and so yeah i don't know i'm i'm looking forward to whatever's to come going forward i think that's all i gotta say about this episode though uh and the season as a whole Definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm very curious to see all your opinions. Um, what do you think is going to happen next? Uh, how did you feel about this season as a whole? Uh, anything that I talked about, I'm very curious. Otherwise, if you enjoyed my reaction, please leave a like on the video. It means a lot to me. It helps my channel grow. If you're new here or you find yourself coming back often, hit subscribe. Ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. And if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction, consider supporting me on Patreon. That is linked in the description down below. Uh, you just sync up your own copy of the show and you can watch along with me. Or consider joining me on YouTube memberships. Uh, that would be awesome as well. But other than that, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys next time.